please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community in the last week. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call, please. Here. 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 Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order. 3A, minutes of the regular meeting of the Scranton Housing Authority held January 7th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, tax assessor's report appeal hearing to be held February 20th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. <laughs> Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Yes. Due to uh, Mrs. Evans' illness, uh, we'll be switching the order of the meeting tonight from uh, we're going to have motions first and then go into citizens' participation. <laughs> That's okay with everyone on the board. That's fine. Yep. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I, uh, we received a memo from uh, DPW. It s states that although Monday is a holiday, President's Day, there will be a trash pickup on Monday. So if your trash is being, it won't be a day delayed. So put it out at the appropriate time. <clears throat> Thank you. Just two announcements. I spoke earlier today um, to the commander for the South Scranton Neighborhood Watch. Um, the, they're, they're structured the commander, they have black captains, and uh, they all report up to one another. They wanted me to announce um, two items. One, that they have a Facebook page, which is Southside Neighborhood Watch on Facebook, where you could follow and get updates on their meetings and things of that nature. And also that they meet on the third Wednesday of each, each month at the Southside Senior Center on 424 Alder at 6.30 p.m. They also have a monthly observation and awareness walk each month, weather permitting. And again, if you're on Facebook, you could go to the Southside Neighborhood Watch Group. And secondly, um, Giovanni Piccolino, owner of Buona Pizza, wanted me to announce that on March 31st, he'll be holding an Easter brunch from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Buona Pizza, and it's free for all those who wish to attend. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wish to announce that the contract between the City of Scranton and Standard Parking for management of the parking meter system will remain tabled since a review is in process. Also, I'd like to wish everyone a very happy Valentine's Day and particularly to my special Valentines, my sweet granddaughters, Mara, Kara, and Anna. Also, I wish my darling Anna a very happy second birthday tomorrow and a hundred more. And that's it. Fourth order. Yeah. Mrs. Evans, can we go to 5A motions? Yes. Okay. The 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions at this time? Uh, nothing at this time. Thank you. Mr. Rogan? Yes, very briefly. And um, I apologize. I don't have a whole lot to say. I usually try to respond to what the speakers are saying 
um, at the meeting. But as Mrs. Evans mentioned, um, I know myself and my colleagues have had still receiving a number of calls, <coughs> um, emails, and, and messages about the parking agreement that is that is up in the air. And the response from the business community and those who shop and work in the downtown has uh, been overwhelming that they are opposed to increases in rates and increases in hours. Now, I, Mr. Loscom, I know he was um, an advocate for Street Smart, and we did play phone tag a little bit um, this week, but we definitely want to get together with him and talk a little bit about the possibility of bringing Street Smart back. I know he left me a couple voicemails. It's definitely something that, that I'd like to work on. Meter enhancement and me increasing meter rates are two completely different items. When you can get more money out of what you already have without increasing rates across the board, that's a much more fair and, and you know, equitable way to go for residents, for business owners, and for the city, where the city can increase revenue without increasing rates. Um, a blanket rate increase or hour increase um, seems that it'll be detrimental, especially going pa if we go past 6 o'clock when I know residents brought it up and I brought it up last week when people will have to pay to attend a city council meeting if they wish to park on the street to address city council. Um, I also saw in the paper that the, the rates, they, they won't be decreasing the rates of the garages. And this once again goes back to the idea of uh, having two competing entities to drive competition and foster, the, come up with the best product. When, you know, if one company was managing the meters and another was managing the garages, it would be in each company's best interest to have the best product. When, if we had one company manage both, they would essentially have a monopoly on parking where they could pretty much do whatever they want. So that's um, some of the other issues that have they've been brought up about it. Um, but I look forward to working with my colleagues and, and definitely uh, addressing the issue. I do think we need to do something to try to increase revenue, but also at the same time, we want to work with the business owners um, to, you know, to keep the, the business owners in the downtown that are doing well and hopefully get some more business owners in the, the vacant areas of downtown. So the, um, you know, the big issue I felt, and I know Mr. Loskin agrees, is the reset on the meters where everyone pays their fair share. If there's, there's extra time on there, it goes away. You pay for what you stay. And, and that's, um, that's more than fair. Um, finally, I did attend um, the Pinebrook neighborhood meeting this past uh, Tuesday. And they had many concerns, but the, the bulk of them focused once again on blight and unfortunately a lack of response from certain department heads. Um, I do have a list of how, I'm not going to read all these off because they are numerous. Um, I do have a list that I will give to you, Mrs. Craig, to send to Mr. Seitzinger. And also, one of the other questions was, um, there are a few rooming houses in that neighborhood, and they have questions about the rooming house inspections. And there were some residents down there were told that these inspections would be outsourced and not done by city inspectors, which is something they were concerned about. Um, so I, I will put that request in as well. And also I received a letter and a, a, a phone full of pictures from a resident, and I won't mention his name or address, but I will re report this into Mrs. Craig, um, that the DPW damaged the property on West Mountain, on West Mountain Road, because of the ice issue. Now there's an issue on both sides of the road, um, but the DPW went on his private property and changed the course of runoff onto his property um, where openings were made and the water drains basically down into his home. Small trees were also knocked down and uh, the police have been called to, to correct the action. So I will be sending this one in as well. And uh, sorry for how brief there, but I look forward to your comments and the public participation. Thank you. Mr. Lasko? Uh, I have nothing this evening, thank you. Mr. Joyce, comments or motions tonight? Yes. As we know, legislation for the parking meter contract, as well as the rates and hours of operation, will not be part of tonight's agenda. I'm pleased that these two pieces of legislation are not part of tonight's agenda. More information needs to be gathered for both pieces of legislation before a concrete vote can be made. Over the past week, I've received calls and emails from various residents and businesses regarding the parking meter situation. 
I encourage the public to keep contacting us with their thoughts and ideas regarding the parking meters as we look to make a well-informed decision, taking both residents' concerns and business concerns into consideration. Uh, secondly, parking garages. Scranton City Council has received emails from concerned citizens who state that one of the reasons why the parking garages are empty is because they're filthy. Residents indicated that some of the parking garages contain feces, condoms, and other types of garbage, as well as items that suggest that homeless people may be sleeping in the stairways. Residents also report that they d don't feel safe parking inside of the garages. <clears throat> Residents also reported that um, they have tried to contact Mr. Washoe about the condition of the parking garages. However, no correspondence was ever returned. It's troubling to think that the parking garages are in poor shape, especially since people that park there are paying quite a bit to uh, actually park their cars. This begs the question as to whether or not the garages are being maintained properly, and if not, why aren't they? Mrs. Cray, can we please send a letter to Mr. Washoe and Standard Parking informing them about the condition of the parking garages and asking them to rectify this problem as soon as possible? Moving on, Scranton City Council has received a report for animals brought to the Griffin Pond Animal Shelter by the city's animal control officer for November and December of 2012. The total number of animals brought to the shelter for the month of November was 23. Subsequently, the number of animals brought to the shelter for the month of December was 30. For the year of 2012, the total number of animals brought to the shelter was 460. As one may or may not know, the city of Scranton is required to pay a fee of $50 per animal brought to the shelter. In 2012, the city paid $35,000 to the Griffin Pond Animal Shelter as an advance payment for animals to be brought to the shelter in 2012. 460 animals multiplied by $50 per animal is only $23,000. With this in mind, I'm wondering if we have a credit towards 2013. Mrs. Craig, can you please contact the Griffin Pond Animal Shelter and inquire if the city has a credit for the year of 2013 on future animal deliveries to the shelter? Also, please inquire out of the 460 animals brought to the shelter how many have been euthanized. Scranton City Council has received a final report of the organizations that contributed pilots for the year of 2012. I would like to thank these organizations for making contributions to the city and encourage them to do so again in 2013 as nonprofit contributions are vital to the city. These organizations are the Scranton Housing Authority, the University of Scranton, Lutherwood, the Harrison House, and Covenant Presbyterian Church. I would also like to encourage other nonprofits to make contributions to the city as well and uh, be good neighbors to us. Over the past week, um, I've received numerous calls and emails regarding the salary of the mayor. Most of the calls I received were to the tune that the mayor's salary should be higher than $60,000 per year after we moved it to $60,000 last week. While I know that Scranton is in a dire financial situation right now, I clearly thought this out for a while. The next mayor will have much work to do, perhaps more work than any mayor ever had to do in the past. Scranton is in need of much repair, and the candidate that will be our next mayor needs to focus their attention on restoring fiscal health to the city. With this in mind, I agree with what Mr. McGough said last week after hearing from the public uh, that there should be an in in incremental increase to the mayor's salary. And tonight, I make a motion, and I have copies of it here. <coughs> I make a motion to amend item 7A to increase the salary of the mayor incrementally as follows, 5,000 in 2015, 5,000 in 2016, and 5000 in 2017 for a ceiling of $75,000 in 2017. Second. 
And the question? Yes. Um, if there were increases of $5,000 for three years, wouldn't that only be 65000 with the base of fifty currently? Well, it's on top of the sixty thousand. Okay, so it would be a total of twenty five thousand dollars over those years. Okay. Yes, as I stated in the papers and at council, I believe that twenty five thousand dollars is a, is a little bit too much, especially when you include that the mayor does receive a car, insurance, and gasoline. Um, because of that, I will be voting no on this. And uh, that's all. Um, is the intent, I'm sorry. No, you, you go ahead. Is, is the intent then to leave it at 75000 from that point on? Or would it revert back to 60000 with no, that, a new mayor? That's it would stay at seventy five. I think that's yes. what you mean, yes. Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure I knew what I was voting on. If I could just add, uh, you know, again, I, I've heard a lot from a lot of the uh, constituents out there. Uh, knowing the condition the city is in at this point, uh, we're trying to be as prudent as possible. But uh, again, this is a major corporation. We do need a lot of work done and hopefully a lot of cooperation under the next administration. But um, I think it's due time that the mayor's salary is increased. I was happy with the 60, but after hearing a lot more this past week, um, at this point I would have to agree with, with uh, Mr. Joyce that, that I would go along with this here. That's all I have. Um, I note what Mr. Rogan says, but uh, on the other hand, it might be a change for the next mayor to use his own vehicle rather than being provided a vehicle. And uh, certainly, you know, the I think the city is 27 square miles, so it's small enough that uh, I really don't feel a vehicle is essential uh, well, for I, a mayor. I would agree that there, there is that is still in in the legislation. Um, just to elaborate a little bit, basically it's a it's a twenty five thousand dollar raise in one year, but over ten years, that's a quarter of a million dollars. Over twenty years, it's half a million dollars, and over forty years, that's a million dollars of of additional spending. Um, Again, it's not a budget buster by any means, and the mayor, we all agree, is currently the salary is low compared to other areas. Um, but as I stated before, public service doesn't pay the same rate as the private sector. Um, those who go into public service don't certainly don't do it for the money. Um, so I, I, I felt 60,000, an increase of $10,000 was acceptable. This is a little too high for me, um, so I will vote no on the amendment. Um, just one last brief remark. I, I tend to agree with the comments made by Councilman Joyce and Loscom in that uh, the duties and responsibilities that lie ahead are far, far greater than any that have been faced in the past. I also believe it's important to bring the salary up to a level whereby uh, our mayor's salary is at least competitive with similar municipalities throughout the Commonwealth. Um, it seems like a, a very significant raise, I agree, but it is a $5,000 increase per year and uh, I, I will be voting in favor of the amendment. Anyone else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. Okay. 
Um, finally, I did have some citizens requests. Uh, the first deals with the 2500 block of Sweatland Street. Several Kaiser Valley residents have informed me that the 2500 block of Sweatland Street is in very poor shape as there are numerous potholes and cracks in the road, making travel conditions extremely difficult. And this is causing a good deal of wear and tear on cars. Uh, Mrs. Craig, please contact Director Dewar and ask him to rectify the situation in the best way that he sees fit. Kaiser Valley residents have also informed me that the 100 block of North Cameron Avenue is in poor shape as there are many potholes and cracks in the road making travel conditions extremely difficult. Uh, Mrs. Craig, please add this to the uh, concerns to contact Director Dewar about. A number of West Granton residents have informed me that the home located at 1216 West Gibson Street is in very poor shape. The home contains boarded up windows and the backyard is a mess as there is rubbish uh, contained in the yard and a dead tree is falling into the house. Residents also report an odor coming from the home and they'd like to see something done about this eyesore in their community. Mrs. Craig, please contact Director Seitzinger and ask him to address this property as soon as possible. And finally, uh, North Scranton residents have expressed their concerns that the patch of road at the end of the 1200 block of Court Street, directly under the Scranton Expressway overpass, is in very poor shape. Um, numerous potholes are present in the, in the vicinity and travel conditions are deplorable. Mrs. Craig, please add this to the list of items to correct, or contact Director Dewar about, and that's all. Thank you. Good evening. I have only a few announcements. First, a request for qualifications to provide valuation services for the Scranton Sewer Authority <clears throat> was advertised in today's newspaper. The city may wish to sell the Scranton Sewer Authority in the future, particularly in light of the extensive EPA mandates which the authority as it stands may not be able to achieve. If an eventual sale were to occur, proceeds would be used to pay the current financial obligations of the Scranton Sewer Authority so as to eliminate these financial burdens for Scranton taxpayers and all rate payers. The remainder of the sale proceeds would be distributed to Scranton and Dunmore, both of whom have demonstrated needs for such revenue. Equally important, the EPA mandates will require anywhere between 100 million to 150 million in order to attain compliance. If the Scranton Sewer Authority continues as the owner-operator, these costs will only be split among Scranton and Dunmore ratepayers. We have already witnessed numerous rate increases in the past several years, and they are nowhere near the significant increases that lie ahead. A sale to a national or global company would allow these increases to be spread among all its ratepayers rather than solely Scranton and Dunmore ratepayers. In addition, the improper use of vehicles and equipment by a few employees that occurred since the takeover by the Scranton Sewer Authority would be eliminated by a private company that can run the system more cost efficiently while meeting the requirements of federal mandates. Now a potential sale involves a lengthy process which also must achieve compliance with state regulations. The city and sewer authority are in the very early stages of this process, which means they are exploring the possibilities and thereafter analyzing the information obtained. Uh, next, I had worked over the last few months to develop a healthcare consortium among the city, county, and school district in order to drive down the costs of health care for each of the governing bodies. Uh, 
Mayor Doherty was agreeable to exploring this potential savings. And a meeting was conducted among representatives of the city, county, and school district. While the city and school district agreed to provide their health care data to be analyzed for cost-saving purposes during the meeting, the county commissioners who were not present but represented by their chief of staff have since declined any and all participation. There is no cost involved to the participants. It is most discouraging that the commissioners have shown no interest in even an analysis of the data and bowed out of an opportunity to save money for the taxpayers. And Mrs. Craig, just one brief request. Uh, in the letter that Councilman Joyce requested to be sent to Mr. Washoe, if we could also include a request from Council with my colleagues' agreement to consider providing reduced price parking on the top level of at least one garage, if not all, for those who work in the downtown. And I just wanted to explain, Council has no authority over the garages whatsoever. They are strictly and solely under the control of Mr. Washoe. Uh, but I do believe that some good ideas came out of last week's meeting and they should be considered by Mr. Washoe. And that's it. 5B, no business at this time. Sixth order, no business at this time. <coughs> Seventh order, 7A, <coughs> for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of Council Number 7, 2013, as amended, amending file of Council Number 31 of 1987, Section 2, by increasing the salary of the Mayor to $60,000 annually, with said salary increase effective January 1st, 2014. Uh, do we have to add the amendment to that? It would be, would be to approve the motion as amended. And that, that would be tonight's, that would be tonight's amendment because last week yes. the motion was amended to increase it from fifty to sixty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So that's the motion that is before council tonight and then with the amendment that has been amended that it would be five, three five thousand dollar increments starting in 2014. So the motion would be to approve the motion as amended. Thank you. 2015, okay. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A as amended. Second. And the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Loscomb? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A as amended, legally and lawfully adopted. And at this time, we will return to fourth order citizens' participation. And the first speaker tonight is Gary Lewis. And Mr. Lewis, before you begin, I do apologize for I'm sorry, I apologize for having to leave. It's okay. Certainly hope you feel better. Thank you. Over the past two weeks, 
I've attended multiple meetings that have been organized by Scranton Tomorrow to discuss the proposed enhancements to the city's on-street parking program. The meeting attendees are primarily downtown businesses, but many residents have also attended. The business community has put forth a consistent message. These enhancements are detrimental to the downtown's growing recovery. These proposed enhancements will drive business out of the downtown. Just imagine having to feed the meter in the middle of dinner or run out of a clothing store to add quarters to the meter. Why would patrons deal with such issues when they can head to the shops at Montage or the Route 6 corridor in Dixon City and not deal with these problems? During our meetings, the validity of the data contained in the parking study has also been called into question. The study does not appear to have reviewed parking habits during the extended hours being proposed. It also appears to have failed to account for free parkers, such as municipal vehicles, food trucks, or meter violators. The businesses again report a consistent message. Parking in the busy portion of the downtown is difficult. Spots may be available at other locations, but patrons are reluctant to walk across the downtown just to get where they're going. On top of availability concerns, businesses are already struggling with meter anxiety. Many patrons cut, business, cut visits short, and many merchants, sensitive to their customers' budgets, warn customers to watch the clock so that they can avoid the $20 meter overtime ticket. Another common concern is the impact of the proposed enhancements on employees of businesses in the downtown. Many of these businesses are restaurants, which pay relatively low wages to employees who, who rely heavily on tips. Under the proposed enhancement, a minimum wage employee who works nights would be facing a $30 per week cost just to get to work. This is on top of any other lost wages or tips due to uh, reduction in business. Our message is not no contract for on-street parking. It's simply not this contract for on-street parking. The downtown community d was not consulted by Rich and Associates when they compiled the parking study and it does fully support a functional and reasonable parking system. We believe that there are a few alternatives that should be considered. Perhaps the city could engage in a multi-month pilot program by standard parking in which they would operate the city's meters under the current hours and rates to see if they can actually achieve the 25% efficiency that they themselves claim they would provide. Maybe the city could pursue better signage. Many individuals that come into the downtown are not familiar with the downtown. They don't know where the garages are, and in many cases, they don't even know if they're public garages because they are so poorly signed. Alternative parking solutions, such as valet parking, which could utilize the garage, may also be another idea. The removal of food trucks from Courthouse Square would also be a great benefit to the downtown parking situation. These trucks take up two or three spots. They're often accompanied by spotter vehicles, and they also appear to be violating city code, which prohibits the peddling of, of goods such as that within 100 feet of a brick and mortar business that pays mercantile tax. If you look at the downtown, you can't get 100 feet away from another restaurant, and we have food trucks lined up and, and parking spots. Beyond these types of implementation and management issues, I also have some concerns around the revenue estimates that were in the proposed contract. It appears that Standard is planning to more than double the Rich and Associates estimate for on-street meter revenue. This includes violations. A number, of the factor, a number of factors contribute to what I think will be an inability to meet the 2013 revenue projections. These factors are the number of offline meters, which was reported at more than 600 in the month of January, timing of the new meter installation. If you look at the contract, it looks like there's about a three-month lag between execution of the contract, ordering of the meters, and final installation. That means the new meters, which are supposed to provide a 50% efficiency increase, would not be online until June at the earliest. So we're losing more than half a year of, of that additional incremental revenue. Additionally, I, I think the total cost of the contract will exceed $600,000 per year. That's roughly double what the city is currently paying for the six um, meter enforcement personnel that are, that are employed by the city. This $600,000 number includes the management fee, the meter fee, the vehicle fee, the monthly costs for operating the credit card meters, as well as reimbursement for office space, salary, and benefits. 
it also looks like they appear to be relying heavily on violation revenue, which, depending on how aggressive they are, could can also contribute to driving people out of, um, out of the downtown. Finally, I just want to call your attention to what I think could be some additional negative clauses within the contract. There's a termination fee of $5,000 per employee. That would amount to about $35,000 should the city cancel the contract, rehire the six employees, and then hire a new director. The vehicle purchase to maintain the meters is questionable given the meters are generally located in a one square mile area. And the interest rate of 8.5% is also being charged on the sales tax, which Standard will pay on behalf of the city because the city is unable to purchase the meters on their own. Again, this isn't no contract. We're just encouraging you to not adopt this contract and, and pursue alternatives and closely review uh, the contract as it exists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Our next speaker is Leslie Collins. Good evening. I'm Good evening. Leslie Collins. I'm the executive director of Scranton Tomorrow. And I thank you for the opportunity this evening to speak on behalf of Scranton Tomorrow, the downtown business community, as well as our Main Street Scranton participants. The purpose of my attending the meeting this evening was to discuss um, the legislation regarding parking. And I would like to thank you for tabling um, the legislation once again. And our hope is, by tabling the legislation, that it will enable the downtown business community to provide additional input. Um, we also hope that it will lend the opportunity for Scranton tomorrow to bring a number of business representatives together with members of council for a, a more in-depth conversation of some of the questions, the concerns, as well as recommendations that they have regarding downtown parking since they are in the downtown on a daily basis. Within the past week, Scranton Tomorrow has facilitated several meetings focused on the proposed parking legislation. Our initial meeting included a presentation from Standard Parking and proved to be quite successful and very educational. It was a, a forum where it allowed for attendees to ask relevant questions and voice their initial concerns regarding the proposed on-street parking rate increase and the extended hours of enforcement. Our most recent meeting focused on the review and the analysis of the study which was prepared by Rich and Associates in late 2012. We believe the study conducted by Rich and Associates has several deficiencies. Not only did the study not include public outreach, but the study failed to analyze the parking habits after 5 p.m. and on Saturdays. Therefore, one could conclude that the proposed increase in the hours of monitoring are not necessarily based on valid findings or market data. The consensus of our meeting indicates that the extended hours of monitoring Monday through Friday and the addition of Saturdays are not justified and will create a less desirable perception of our downtown negatively impacting those in our community who have invested and believe in the revitalization of our city. The study does provide relevant information and data regarding the rate system. The study states that the city of Scranton's on-street and off-street parking rates are higher than most benchmark cities. It continues by stating that the current rates are compatible to those implemented in Philadelphia and Harrisburg. We believe these findings are extremely important and clearly indicating that both on-street and off-street parking rates are at the maximum threshold as they currently stand. Additionally, the study shows us that the occupancy in the public garages continues to, to decline and, it is a, and, and is at approximately 30% occupancy at all of the facilities. If we are to apply the theory of supply and demand, we can see that the rate scale, both hourly and monthly for the public garages, is prohibitive to downtown parkers. 
Knowing this data to be factual, we conclude that increasing the on-street parking meter rate will not move existing parkers into the garages with the existing rate schedule. Currently, the rates are more than the market can tolerate. This increase will have a negative effect on the business community, and we ask that you do not agree to increase the meter rates, knowing that our city's rates are already above the norm. I would um, reiterate Gary's um, statement that the downtown business community that we have engaged is not against improvements for the parking. Um, they're not against um, techno technological improvements, um, and, and they're certainly open to other suggestions. The concern is the um, specifics of this contract, specifically the increased um, monitoring dates, the extended dates and hours, as well as the increased potential rates. Uh, before voting on any type of parking enhancements, we would ask that you um, engage input from the downtown businesses. The businesses welcome the improvements, but certainly not at the expense of their patrons or of their business. And once again, I would like to offer that Scranton tomorrow would be more than happy to facilitate a meeting next week in order to continue the dialogue and the open communication and have a meeting with the business representatives that we have been working with as long as, as long as, um, along with uh, resident, new residential individuals and um, have a meeting with city council representatives. So I would like to offer that and um, I will be calling city council next week, hopefully to arrange a meeting. I do think that that would be um, uh, quite productive. Once again, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Our next speaker is, and Mr. Bolas, uh, are you the next speaker? It looks like you may have erased your name. I just did not know, I'll take it, I don't care. Oh, okay. Bob Bolas is our next speaker. Around here, when you're first or last, I don't think it makes much difference. You know, tonight, well, first off, uh, I'd like to just do a little announcement here. On Sunday, at Dunmore, for fellow firefighter uh, Dominic Rinaldi, there's a benefit going on. So people are out there, they should show up and show some support. He had a fire this week at his home. Also on March 9th, uh, <clears throat> my fire company and troop is uh, also going to hold a benefit for him. Mr. Bolas, the one Sunday could you give us more detail on it? Do you know where it's going to be? Or? I believe it's around the firehouse or somewhere up there. Uh, I'm not sure where they're holding it. Uh, somebody could inquire, or they could even make an announcement to let people know where it's at. But while I was here tonight, I thought I'd approach that subject sure. for them. Thank you. I've yet to receive a copy of the fee agreement between uh, Attorney Hughes and uh, Mr. Kelly, uh, as to uh, what's going on here, uh, I put it in writing on a couple occasions, and I'd like to get that done once and for all. I think we're entitled to it. On the meters, I know it's not on the agenda tonight. I think it's a cash cow giveaway. You know, anybody here uh, watch Shark Tank on Friday evenings? What you got there, the sharks don't take a bad deal. The sharks take only good deals and something that's going to give them a return. What you're dealing with here last week were sharks. They're here because it's a good deal, not a bad deal. But the beauty part of it for them is they're dealing with the incompetence we have in this area that we cannot administer or control our own assets. We have to look at everybody else out there to show us what to do. And that's the sad part of why Scranton is where it is. You look at Washoe, gets $100,000 a year. Tonight, I'm rather upset with council, with the procedure, that we didn't get to speak regarding the mayor's wages. You guys took that out of our hand, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, what you did here tonight, because when you change an agenda item, I think we have the right to speak on it before you vote on it. 
And uh, I think it's something we should all look into. I don't know if you did it legally, procedurally, correct tonight. We had something to say about it, because remember, it's not about your money, it's about our money. Mr. Rogan last week said you're here for the love of the city, not the money. I didn't see anybody here cut their wages in half. I didn't see anybody here cut their pensions in half and say, let's give back to the people. I didn't hear any of those comments. But tonight you took a mayor's salary, a man or woman that you want to administer this city, a living disaster, and you want to pay fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000? Come into the real world. Find out what it is to administer a business. And this is a business, a 90-some million dollar a year business. And we had a right to speak about it. Mr. McGough just thinks it's a joke because he gets a pension for the rest of his life from the school district where we pay taxes to see that he got his salary and got all his increases and make sure that he'll have his benefits and health care. Excuse me, we're not here to no, speak about my pension. No, I'm not done, Mr. McGough. You can talk to me pension. when I'm finished. You had a smile on your no, face talking about what we're doing here with people and it annoys me. me. Excuse I run me, we're business. not here to talk about my pension or oh, my well, it salary. Is your pension. You're a we pay for it. It's part no, of public don't. record. I paid into it. Yeah, you paid into for it. For 35 so years. years. So do we. We pay into it very dearly. Every time our taxes go up on our homes, we pay very, very dearly. And I work 365 days a year, much more than you did. So let's not go there. I could debate you on it right to the end. I'm accustomed to running businesses and corporations. And if you want somebody to administer and run this city, you had a $50,000 a year person running it. Look where you went. For 12 years, you went down the tubes. What you need is somebody in here with a business background, somebody that's going to administer this city, come in here and deal with you people face to face and not hide and run. Take the responsibility, what it's going to take to turn Scranton around. Deal with the Leach 8 line. Deal with the KLZs and nonprofits, the university and other people. You need a strong administrator. You're not going to get it for 60000 handing out money that uh, people earn without having responsibility. So what you did tonight, you took the vote away from us to talk to you people about where we're going and what we're doing. And that was wrong. I'd love to be able to discuss everybody else's wages and see how they would like it at the end and see what they gave back in return, which is very, very little. When you turn around and think that someone should come in here and now talk about the sewer authority you want to get rid of, the next cash cow in the city, we have assets that we, the people, have paid for. And just look at your history, your background in administrative challenging, so to speak, Southside Complex. You sit here and talk about money, yet for a dollar a year, you gave away the icebox. They put in a new turkey hill. They're making money because that's what a business does. It makes money. Chris Doherty's leaving this job because he said he's going to go out and make money. But he couldn't make a dime for the city of Scranton here, and that's what you got for $50,000. If you want Scranton to survive and you want somebody in here to do the job and turn this disaster, this sinking ship around, you got to pay for what you're going to get. And what you did tonight was totally wrong as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Bolas. Mr. Mr. Joyce, before the next speaker, um, the benefit that Mr. Bolas mentioned, yes. um, I know Mr. Loscom asked for the details. Um, it's a breakfast buffet benefit this Sunday, um, February 17th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. $10 per person at the Dunmore Community Center located at 1414 Monroe Avenue in Dunmore. And if you are unable to attend and wish to make a donation, they can be sent to Dunmore Fire Department, care of Dom Rinaldi, 400 South Blakely Street, Dunmore, PA, 18512. Thank you, Mr. Roger. You're welcome. Our next speaker is Ron Elman. Hello, Council. Hello. Good evening. 
those, those three fellows here last week reminded me of three vultures flying over a dying city picking at the bones. There just couldn't be a more one-sided, useless contract than they proposed, but I didn't come to talk about them. I, I hope everybody read this this morning, this about the Pure Public Charity Act Mr. Blake is defending. You know, for the past couple of years, I've pleaded with you people to investigate this act and its loopholes, it, it, of course, there was just an overwhelming lack of results from, from council, like a lot of times that, that when we suggest something out here. Now, Mr. Blake wants to go as far as, as having a constitutional amendment made against the cities for this act. He wants to clear up all these loopholes. You know, it's like we're not suffering enough around here. It, 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 I, I just don't understand somebody that's, that's the taxpayers put in office thinking like this, completely 100% against the people that put them in office. Maybe if those guys in Archibald if their taxes were a third more like ours and, and their school system was suffering and the streets suffering and, and everything about the city suffered because of nonprofits taking away millions of dollars, they might feel different. I, I just find Mr. Uh, Mr. Blake's actions a uh, absolute disgrace to the people of this city. It, it's an attack upon us, if you ask me. You know, it, I talked to a real estate attorney on, on the phone with an idea that I had, and he told me as far as he knew it, it was feasible. It's simply freeze the taxes where they are right now. Have the single tax office put a lien for the year coming or the coming years, uh, 99 years, whatever, on every taxable property in the city, and you can't take it off. The nonprofits can't, can't remove it without the single tax office releasing it. What's wrong with that? That's it. That way you can have a budget without a million dollars or two million dollars worth of property being taken off the tax rolls by these nonprofits every year. You could have some kind of idea what, what kind of income we were going to have in it wouldn't interfere one bit with buying or selling a piece of property. Maybe our esteemed attorney, I'm sure he would know more about it than I do, but I, I just don't, you, you just got to do something. Yeah. The city is just, I talked to Mr. Setzinger this morning about a little problem. In fact, I phoned the office and left a message. In less than five minutes, he phoned me back. I, I, that's how things should be done in this city. I, I was really surprised. And I had a complaint about a piece of property in my neighborhood. And he said it, it wasn't important, but he said he'd have something done today about it, you know, which is, you know, I, I certainly congratulate him. Uh, My neighborhood is just deteriorating. There, there's just, you, I don't have no sidewalks. I got us every last week. There was water all over my yard where the sidewalks should be because the sewer, been they've been stopped up for 20 years and nobody seems to care. It's I go down. 
Like I said, I, I can't walk on a sidewalk anywhere. People park their car with all four wheels on it. This, this isn't the neighborhood it was when I bought the house. I'd like to see that neighborhood come back. And I'd like to see something done about the, uh, 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 an elected official that wants to attack this city like this. This is a disgrace. This is absolutely, it's just senseless to have a man in office that, that is Thank completely you, supported and bought and owned by these nonprofits. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Elman. You. Our next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Um, just like to comment on the, uh, the legislation uh, to begin tonight in regards to the mayor's salary. Um, you know, I feel we've had ample time to have discussion on this issue. Um, I don't think it was a, it's been a secret. Uh, we've had time to go back and forth and have dialogue and, and discuss whether or not uh, we believe the mayor's salary should be 50000 60000 70000 or whatever we feel it should be. Um, I, from day one, did support an increase in the salary um, for many reasons, a uh, few uh, being including the fact that, you know, when you take a look at a lot of the other municipalities uh, throughout the Commonwealth, um, our salary certainly uh, doesn't even come close to the salaries of mayors, uh, such as those in Wilkesbury, Reading, Allentown, and, uh, and other municipalities. So I do feel that it was necessary to do that. Um, I didn't support a $30,000 increase in one shot, as I made that quite clear from this podium a few weeks ago. Uh, I, from day one, also was of the opinion that it should, be, should have been done uh, incrementally um, over the course of uh, the next five years. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing here tonight with the amendment made to the legislation, um, $5,000 over five years. Uh, I would have been fine with the $60,000. Um, I don't have a problem with seventy five dollars because I do feel when you take a look at the duties that the mayor, uh, particularly in this town, has to take on, I certainly feel it's, uh, it's appropriate uh, to enact uh, this increase. Um, there were some concerns about vehicles and other things, other expenses as to being reasons why we would go against this. Um, if that's an issue or if we have a problem with vehicles, then I think we have the ability to uh, draft legislation that would prohibit any elected official, such as the mayor, from having a vehicle. If that's our, our big problem, if that's our reason why we're against the mayor getting a raise, well then, let's draft legislation to do away with the vehicle then. But I think that simply being our reason to go against a, an increase for the mayor, I just find to be totally absurd. Uh, we know the situation we face, and if we want to get competent people around the city, well then you have to pay them more. I mean, we saw what we had the last 12 years for 50000 and we see the situation we're in today. Well, you get what you pay for. On the parking authority, um, obviously it's tabled this evening. There's still many questions that we have uh, in, in regards to this contract. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, getting answers to some of them. I know there's issues on uh, the meter increases, uh, the switch to uh, Saturday uh, meter operation. Uh, I know there were some questions in, in regards to the uh, remaining six employees that are out there that have not been retained. I, too, have uh, some issues with that. Uh, it's my understanding that at one time there were 12 employees staffed by the parking authority. Uh, six were kept down by Central Parking, which is obviously merged with Standard. Uh, and other, the other six were, were left behind, and I just don't feel that that's, uh, that's fair. Those employees had a job. Uh, they did what they were told. And they shouldn't be punished for the incompetence and fiscal mismanagement of that authority uh, that ran it recklessly uh, over the last 12 years and certainly caused uh, quite a mess that we, uh, we face today. Um, but the bottom line here is real simple, as I've said. I stated it last week, and I couldn't have been more passionate uh, about it if I wanted to be, that the money has to come from somewhere. And I certainly don't want to see the residents punished. I obviously don't want to see businesses suffer. But the city could possibly be on the hook if these payments aren't made for over $100 million. And when we ask ourselves, where will the money then come from? Well, it's going to come from the taxpayers. And how are we going to get it from the taxpayers? It's going to come in the result of tax increases, whether we want to believe it or not. It's the reality. It's the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. That's where it's going to come from. As I said, you know, the city doesn't have a printing press. We don't have a tree that we can go pick money from. It comes from somewhere. And ultimately, the taxpayers will yet again suffer. And we want to avoid that at all costs. And I think that's why we're looking at a new innovative way to bring in revenue and certainly do it in a way that's fair for all sides. Again, we're not looking to see anybody punished. 
And that's why there's still some questions that need to be answered. That's why this legislation is still on the table. So I'm hopeful that you know, we'll get the answers we need so that uh, an informative decision can be made and uh, it, this all works out for all sides involved. And uh, with that said, that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you know, generally, I guess I don't see things the same way as every, everyone else at times. And as far as the mayor's salary, I think it should stay at $50,000. And I think that maybe a lot of people will disagree. But I think what we're creating is a uh, professional class of politicians who lack the vision, the insight, or any leadership ability whatsoever. Um, you know, we keep talking about liquidating assets and, uh, you know, talking about so many issues in this city. And uh, has it ever dawned on any of the council members that maybe the blight in the neighborhoods is due to poor legislation or just the total uh, draining of, of the residents' salaries through taxes and other, other means? And, and when you take a look at the parking authority, you know, when you see what people pay to park and you compare it to the wages they earn in this city, I don't, you know, don't get me wrong, I know that the council forced the authority into receivership. But at the, at the same time, it also caused a lot of problems with future borrowing and interest rates and the ability of the city to recover. Um, you know, and then, and then we just keep continuing on. And, and maybe it's time to gain control of these parking garages again and go back and look at the minutes when all this money was borrowed and what the councilman said at the time. Because really what's happened here is with the creation of a professional political class, we've thrown the working class people, for lack of a better terminology, right under the bus because they're struggling to survive with the political class that has no understanding of the average working person in the communities they serve. Now, in regards to the sewer authority, in my opinion, I've had quite lengthy conversations with Mr. Barrett about the viability of the Scranton sewer authority. And should we even consider liquidation of that asset? I disagree. Most of the borrowing that that authority is doing is through PenVest. If we turn and we sell off that authority, all the requirements are still going to be have, have to be met by whoever runs it, unless the federal government just decides, hey, you've been privatized, so don't worry, do whatever you want. You know, there comes a point when the people you elect have to show the ability to be leaders and lead. But that's not what's happened in this city. What's happened in this city is we've played politics. And like I've said before, we've elected spaghetti dinner politicians without the ability to lead. But what's really going to happen in this city is the residents, they're going to be living on spaghetti because they won't be able to afford anything else. Because absolutely, this city has been misdirected. And not, you know, it's pretty easy to come here and blame only the last mayor. But this problem has been ongoing for a very long time. A very long time. And it's been addressed many times. But the only problem is we've never elected leadership possible, possibly that had the ability to lead. Because we keep trying to manipulate the voter base where it reaches a point that so many people refuse to vote and participate. And those people are the people that if they return to the polls, we can turn this city around. We can turn this country around. We've got to change our direction. And selling our assets all off is not an answer. It's a problem. We need solutions, not more problems. And we need something else that we don't have in this city, leadership. And we need to let politics, just pick all the politics up and stuff it in a corner and leave it there. Because anything the politics touches, it destroys. Look at this city. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> Our next speaker is Faye Franis. Faye Ferranis, Granton. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. 
I'd just like to say I, I, I'm in favor for the parking meter raise. People seem to understand their taxes, not their taxes, but their money will be spent from this. But don't they understand that without this revenue, their taxes could skyrocket? I mean, everything adds up, these revenue projects. So they have to consider this stuff. And, and I also have to say to you council members, you don't only represent the business people, you represent the 70,000 people in the city who do not want their taxes to go up. I mean, I see all these business people come here but what about everybody else sitting at home that possibly will get their taxes raised if you don't put this through? I mean, you can't just, because everybody comes here, just try to please them and talk nice to them like, you. oh, we can't be afraid. They might not like us. If you really feel we need this revenue, then you have to speak up. You really do. And as far as this, the parking meter program, you need to get a manager. The city needs to get a manager to run this as soon as possible, like today, as soon as possible. Where were the business people when the mercantile tax was lowered? Did they come and thank you? No. It's amazing, isn't it? You have to think about everybody in the city, not a select group. We need the revenue. I'd rather pay a little bit more in a parking meter than pay a high amount in my taxes. Think about it. And think about all the people in the city, not a handful. Another thing, I'm sure Andy Sparagula didn't mean anything by this, but last week he said something that I picked up on. He mentioned about the mayor's salary, and I agree it should be up. He said if a, if a man wants to run for office, and he has a wife and a couple kids, he needs more money. Well, that's true. But how about if a woman wants to run for office with a couple children? Or how about if a woman wants to run for mayor with no children? Did anybody take that into consideration? And I think everybody that's running for office, instead of just their slogans on signs saying, time for a change, out with the old, in with the new, I'd like to see every person running for mayor, for council, for school board, say exactly what their platform is. How are they going to do things financially to get this city in order? Not just say we're going to change things or not talk about Mayor Doherty and what he did wrong. I don't want to hear about who did what wrong in the past. I want to know what they're going to do in the future, what exactly their plans are. Not just signs and little clippets in the paper. I want to know exactly what their plans are to take care of the financial situation in the city of Scranton. Council, school board, and mayor. Be explicit. Another thing. I understand that Bill Courtright, he always was a big fan of the unions, the firemen and police, and many other unions. But from what I understand now, he's not publicly supporting them or saying he will support them. Privately, he's telling them, well, I'm with you guys, but I really can't be associated with you. Well, that's a little shocking. Uh, why is this? I feel it's because many people in the Scranton area don't like unions. Some do, some don't, but many don't. So he doesn't want to alienate these voters. So what he'll do is he'll make on he doesn't like the unions just to get their vote. I wouldn't like it if somebody told me I like you, but I don't want to be seen with you, or I don't want anybody to know that I support you. I think if a person likes somebody or is with someone, they should stand by them. I think anybody that's running for mayor, if they feel strongly about the unions, they should be on that stage at their campaign events with a fireman or a policeman or any union representative on stage with them saying, I support you, I'm with you. And if you don't, then say you don't, but don't play out both sides of your mouth. Don't tell the union people you're for them, but I can't be seen with you. Make it known what you feel. Don't skirt around it. And I understand he doesn't want to be associated with being on council either, because some people don't like people on council. So there's more votes he may lose. Can't do that. If a person could be like that, what kind of person would he be if he were mayor? You have to think about it. If he can't really say how he feels, what kind of person would that be for mayor? That's about all I have to say, and I, and I hope everybody thinks about what I said, because it's very important. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, council. Greg Evans, resident of Scranton, Scranton small business owner. 
Good evening. Good evening. Hey. I, I had some things prepared and they evolved, so bear with me, please, if if I if I take a break and stutter my words. But um, first of all, I want to thank Leslie Collins from Scranton Tomorrow to come out. And she did an excellent job of articulating the concerns of downtown business owners. Um, and also Gary Lewis, he's a great numbers guy. And I always, I've always said that. And so his perspective is also very much valued by me, a small business owner. Um, the proposed parking meter um, times, dates, rates are a slippery slope for downtown Scranton and business um, and Scranton as a whole. Uh, simply, if downtown B Scranton loses customers, they will relocate. If they do that, we could also lose wage tax and mercantile tax if they leave Scranton altogether. Something that Ms. Schumacher mentioned last week, which um, gave a great perspective in regards to two things, the parking meter management and the mayor's salary. Um, we're now going to give the, the, the next mayor, right? Not, not the current mayor. Yeah. Regardless, $75,000 a year. But on the table is an agreement for a $120,000 a year management agreement with a minimum 3% annual increase and 10% of citation revenues. So, and as she stated, that you have the CEO of a, of a city of 75,000 people, but the parking meter management only manages meters and six employees or seven employees. So when you put that into perspective, the one is underpaid and one's overpaid, it seems. So, um, but going back to the, the, um, the parking agreement, it seems like we, we don't need a management company, although maybe we want to hire a management company to, um, oh, what's the word, um, to advise us maybe. That way we're not locked into a five-year contract. And with that advisement, we can hire someone, a single manager at a lower rate and a reasonable rate at that to manage the, the six current employees in, in the management of the meters. And they can implement and come up with their own strategy, one voted on by council perhaps, um, taken in consideration by the downtown business owners as well. Um, regard, again, regarding the, uh, the parking, I do have a question. And it concerns the bidding process. I remember in, in past council meetings, um, there was talk of the Street Smart program. And I believe that was for an RFP for a 90-day trial period. Is that correct? That is correct. OK. And Central Parking RFP was not for a 90-day trial, was it? It was just for a management agreement. Is that correct? OK. Yes. All right. So. If the 90 day trial period was what actually occurred, it would have been concluded by now. And with that, we'd have more data to make an informed decision. Right? Okay. You see where I'm going with that, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, that's all I have regarding the parking agreement. I want uh, one more thing about the, the mayor's salary. Like I said, it, it is underpaid. Um, even seventy-five thousand dollars is arguably un underpaid as well. But my concern is, where's the money coming from? Because we do have a budget shortfall as is. And like I said, you know, there were salary increases that were voted down recently, and not that, not that anybody is, um, you know, th those salary increases would overpay anyone, including the mayor, but without ha defining where that money is coming from, I, I would have disagreed with the vote until that money, that, sh that, that, that stream of income or that stream of revenue for the mayor's increase was um, defined. Um, lastly, I want, I want to actually um, say something positive. It really happens at city council meetings. So let me do that. And I want to take a moment, I want to thank the city actually, because when I returned to Scranton in 2007. I was part of the renaissance of downtown Scranton. That was my, my goal. And I suffered my own financial crisis when a vault collapsed in front of my building. And having all my eggs in one basket at that time, the, um, 
I had, a, I had an insurance claim litig in litigation that took over th three years to settle and to obtain the funds to, to rebuild that sidewalk area. Um, I want to thank the city and subsequently like everyone in the city for enduring that time frame. Um, I, I know it has been an eyesore to, to many and a burden maybe, but um, please realize the, sh the strain it took on, on my business. Um, however, I'm, I'm, shared, I'm pleased to share with everyone that construction will begin on my vault sidewalk area as soon as we have consistent temperatures above freezing. Um, and I will be glad to be viewed as an asset to downtown Scranton, as many of my neighbors are. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton, chief troublemaker. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, once again express support for this council. And I really would appreciate if uh, some of the speakers would consider what this council has done as compared to the previous councils. I mean, they may disagree with each other up there from time to time, but uh, uh, by and large, there's a world of difference, and many of our problems date back to what was just left happen, and uh, there weren't enough people on council to oppose it. So, uh, if you blame anybody, blame the last councils and try to work with these people, and don't discourage them from running. I'm hoping that uh, council will uh, keep a similar configuration. Uh, uh, now, uh, in a 600 block of Southside, Crown Avenue, once again, animal control was up there. To answer your question, uh, if an animal is captured by animal control, in most instances it's euthanized within an hour after it gets to the Humane Society. So, if you have a cat or a, a dog that isn't neutered and they stray away, please keep them in and uh, uh, get them neutered. My cat got out one day. I went for a little uh, stroll on my bike and I came back and he was laying right next to the dog out in the yard. But he's neutered. So if, if, if he turns up missing, uh, you had nobody but yourself to blame. And uh, last week a man mentioned about the pave. Uh, patches on the roads already. There's patches already all over Mul Mulberry Street. Once again, it's the sewer authority, and I'd also like to comment on, I wish if somebody wants to be a lame duck, they should stay a lame duck. Please, no bright ideas with sewers or beaters that, it, it's just gone too far. Uh, a lot of people in downtown were handed a lot of money, and they renovated and put buildings up, and some people have been sitting and De, uh, treading water forever and and uh, it's just I appreciate that you, you uh, tabled that last week and once again uh, corporations take care of themselves they don't take care of the people they're they're more productive maybe but uh, then they also uh, they also take care of themselves and they line their own pockets uh, down at the library there's uh, the corporation, that's a documentary, and uh, Free Lunch, that's a book, and there's a new book out by David K. Johnston, uh, that is The Fine Print, and last week we learned what The Fine Print was in that contract, so uh, in the future I'll address that a little more. And uh, I just read an article in The Nation magazine about rebel towns. And I think it's about time we start to look into this. Uh, I, I'm going to reprint the article up on my printer and let you guys have it. Uh, people are, are rebelling against these state governments that just impose a certain situation on them and, and uh, uh, be totally recalcitrant on how they're supposed to keep their heads above water and pay their, their uh, the city staff. And on parking, once again, uh, you know, I've been noticing once the meters are, are no longer uh, uh, charging fees, 
people park in the middle of a double meter and they get a, a big van or something like that and uh, they're denying another people a, a person a space and, and you have to walk. I'm parked way up by the library and you know, you'll see the various people parking at times right in, in the middle of a double meter. It's ridiculous. I, I, I mentioned that to you one night, Jack. And uh, why don't we just have the police officers come by and hit them with the twenty, thirty dollar fine and let them pay it? You know, get an ordinance going. And uh, one vehicle, one space is the bottom line. And oh, Mr. McGough, I hope uh, that information I gave to you, you could help to uh, please encourage uh, recycling and and uh, get that coordinated. Uh, uh, because there's a lot of recycle uh, stuff that isn't recycled, and and it's uh, we're paying for it after that. And uh, Golden Parrot goes to Harry Reid. You know, I, I thought uh, that our current choice for uh, uh, Secretary of Defense would make a good Republican president, but they're filibustering him. So, bok bok, Harry Reid. <laughs> Don't forget, call your. Uh, Call your uh, congressman and tell him to take his outsource and shove it because that is why your city is falling apart. Nobody has any money. Everybody's starting back to work for 40% less. And then uh, people that maybe vote for these people uh, want raises. Who knows? Uh, thank you. And thank don't you, forget Mr. the bok, bok, bok. Thank you. Thank you. Chrissy. What's going on, buddy? Oh, you got a trophy, yeah, yeah, Chrissy. Yeah. All right. Oh, you have a trophy. <laughs> nice, Chris. Oh, okay. Chris would like me to thank. Did he show you the front and the back? He's got all the autographs on the back of his shirt as well. And he wants to thank Bill Pasqualicio and his wife and Lillian Joe. Uh, Repsis for all they did for him at Abington to get this award. And they were all former West Siders, Chris. <laughs> Beautiful, Chris. Nice. Okay, good evening, Council. Since good evening. the. Um, good evening. Since the amendment or the agreement has been tabled, I will start because I had probably had more than I could get through anyway. But I'll start with a couple of housekeeping items. Mr. Loscom, the false alarms from 2012 yet? I have to apologize. I was working on a lot of stuff on the parking issues this week between okay. my job and that. I, I haven't had a chance to get to the fire department. Okay. <clears throat> and Mr. Rogan, three weeks ago you said you had received the OECD loan list and the night before and you were going to study it and comment the next week and provide me a copy. I, I'm still reviewing it. Um, again, kind of the same thing Mr. Loscom said. The parking issues kind of took took the forefront but um if we can we'll print you off a copy right after the meeting okay uh, back to the uh, agreement remember this quote council fought for this for months council waited for co for cooperation from the administration on this for many months and we are very pleased in conjunction with the administration to pass this legislation tonight that was council president's endorsement of amending the administrative, administrative code of the City of Scranton, Pennsylvania, Section 614 Contracts, Subsection C, to publicly bid for professional services. I verified via right to know there is no city solicitation on record for the procurement of on-street parking meter equipment and for the management and administration of the city's on-street parking meter operation, including enforcement and citation collection services. Further substantiation is the quote from IPS for the parking meters was submitted to uh, SP Plus, which seems strange if in fact the quote was in response to a city of Scranton solicitation. So that first whereas is definitely got to go. Uh, you are violating your own legislation. Needs to be bid out. 
Now, not disclosing the memorandum of understanding between the city and SP Plus, a document executed on December 21st, 2012, until it became a pseudo-emergency is another issue, as is hamstringing, as it's hamstringing the flexibility of our next mayor and city council. It's nice to say the agreement may be terminated without cause with 60 days notice, but the clause that requires the city to pay off the cost of the parking meters and vehicles would make termination prohibitive. We are on the hook now for $468,300. At the start of the second payment year, it's $374,640. The third year, $280,872. The fourth year, $187,320, and the fifth year, $93,660. Is it your plan to include the $468,300 in a contingency account in the 2014 budget? Maybe you can answer that next week. I would yes. think it would be appropriate. Uh, if not, you'd best include at least a clause that protects the taxpayers such that should uh, SP plus terminate the agreement they will lease the meters to the city for the seven thousand eight hundred and five dollars a month for the balance of the 60 months at which time they would become city property the office space we are providing is another issue mr. Hughes told us they will have an office in City Hall but at caucus I believe mr. Valero stated they would have a street level office which is important as we pay all expenses for their office, including utilities, and would be on the hook for the remainder of any lease of a non-city owned property should the agreement be terminated. A ceiling amount for the expenses of this second office needs to be established. How much of this cost is included in the expenses provided? Also, should file of council number six of 2013 be passed without amendment? SP Plus, will they have the keys to City Hall and the Treasurer's Office for those days and times that City Hall is not open for regular business? <coughs> Mr. Valero spoke of additional equipment, such as cameras, similar, I assume, to the equipment that's being used by the City of Harrisburg and leased for $70 a month. Uh, are these included or are they additive to the expenses? Mr. Valero also noted you count, that you counsel and therefore we the public did not have the final agreement before you what you have what has what you have has been amended um, do you now have the amendments to that contract no okay okay I'll complete next week good Lord willing thank you and happy Valentine's Day thank you, you. happy thank Valentine's you. Day to you as well is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, council. Good Mary evening. Chalipko, resident, taxpayer, city of Scranton, crazed resident, city of Scranton. I literally just did what Ms. Franis did, ran down here as I watched city council. I found I can't do that anymore. Watch it. I either have to watch it or be here. It doesn't work. So I look a fright. Thank goodness we have the Chrissies of the city who come here with their honest and sincere thoughts and express themselves in such a manner. First, I'd like to just report on Pinebrook. Pinebrook, as a neighborhood, we have some good news. It's, we're doing well. Um, our city councilmen are concerned. Our police chief is concerned about our neighborhood. And um, we've taken some action as a neighborhood on some of the condemned properties some of the um, blight in the neighborhood and we're working slowly to improve it um, we also have good news and I hope it's okay to say this that the canine unit of the Scranton Police Department will be training it at the Chick Feldman or as it's better known the Pinebrook Field that's a very big uh, plus for our neighborhood and we're so excited to have them there that's very good for Pinebrook what I came here to say and in the future the president, I guess, or the vice president of city council should gavel campaigning from the podium. I don't like what I heard. It should be stopped, and I hope this won't continue until the election in May. Isn't it city business that we're here for? Is there any kind of issue with people coming up here and campaigning rather than city issues or pertinent issues to the city or even the country? 
Can anyone answer that? Yes, matters yes. should be kept to city business. Yes, I, I was going to say it's improper to. Right. We'll, can we handle it in the future voting. so we don't have to hear this week after week about candidate after candidate? Yes, I, I'm sorry. I may have uh, let one of the speakers go a little bit over the line, I, I think. And I, I was sitting there and that's I thought okay. about that afterwards and I realized. It comes as kind of a shock, but that's, it's time for all that to start, I guess. So if we could just handle that in the future, I would appreciate it. And I'm sure many of the other people either viewing at home or half dressed in city council chambers. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. you. Too. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Mrs. Curry? We've exhausted the items on the agenda and moved fourth order to the end, so um, If there's I think no it's further business, obviously I'd, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.